What do you think about Bradley Bill being traded to the Phoenix Suns for Chris Paul and Landry Shamit? And Chris Paul eventually ending up with the Golden State Warriors in exchange for Jordan Poole. You know what? I just, I don't, I'm still pondering on what it really means. Like, okay, so let me just start off with the Phoenix Suns. Bradley Bill going to the Phoenix Suns in place of Chris Paul is supposed to do what exactly? Like, I just, yeah. Maybe Bradley Bill is more athletic. He is a, he is a bit younger than Chris Paul. So if youth is is that, um, Bradley Bill does play at a faster speed. So if that's what they were looking for, okay, I'm okay with that. But you but the Phoenix Suns did that trade and did not improve their roster, their bench, their depth. So what was mm-hmm. really the point in that? So that's that one. I, I I hope it's successful. But Chris Paul going to the Warriors is that what you asked me? Yes. Why? Why? Well, okay. Yeah. So Bradley Bill for me is the same player as Devin Booker, who is going to play point guard now that you've gotten rid of Chris Paul. That worries me as well. But the thing with Chris Paul going to the Warriors, yeah, they just got older. Like what team wants to get older? It's all about the youth movement in the NBA. So that was puzzling to me. And it tells me that the Warriors chose Draymond Green over Jordan Poole, even though Draymond opted out of his deal. So you can just punch your teammate and they still have your, the team still has your back and you send away the guy who was the victim in this case. To yes. me, that's a problem in the Golden State Warriors and probably because they their GM is different now. Their GM is different now. Yeah, that is true. I read somewhere where uh, Steve Kerr said with them acquiring Chris Paul, that they wanted to make, they needed a different, they needed something different. Chris Paul different? <laughs> I'm just like, okay, and I'm, I'm okay with you wanting mm-hmm. something different. I have no problem with that, right? Your difference should be through the draft. Like your difference should be through free agency, young players. Chris Paul? Exactly. Like, you mean to tell me I'm going to be watching a slow Warriors team? Well, Chris Paul's not going to start. I doubt it. I think he's going to be running the second squad because think about it. Golden State, they like to move. They like to cut. It's ball movement, player movement. Chris Paul is methodical, slow, likes to look around, pound the basketball 20 times. That's not Golden State Warriors basketball. I don't know how he's going to fit. That was puzzling. Yeah, that was, I don't I didn't like get it. it. I didn't care for it either. I was like, what? It just didn't. It, it, I have to see it to believe it because right now I just can't believe that that actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about? the Cavs receiving trade offers for Jared Allen. Well, who did they? <laughs> and, they're, and the Cavs are saying, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. And I don't blame them. It depends on the offer, though, because last season the Cavs did not did not go deep, even with Donovan Mitchell on the roster, mm-hmm. right? Evan Mobley and Jared Allen were supposed to be the big defensive presence in the paint. They ended up letting people waltz in when it came down to the playoffs. So – I don't know. I would probably put up Jerry Allen, but it depends on who I'm getting in return. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny because they're not putting up, the Cavs are not putting up Jerry Allen, but they're receiving requests for him. Yeah. Well, I, don't I think what these teams are saying, we know we need big in the paint. We need some more presence. Now, what Jerry Allen will do is block a basket. He will. will. He will. Uh, you know, he can really put one back in. You know, he can do that. So I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting that people are seeking out bigs. Yeah. Nicole Jokic and the Denver Nuggets got teams looking differently at their roster. Oh, you know. think that's what happened? I think so. <laughs> okay. All right. So speaking of a big, Porzingis to the Boston Celtics. I mean, Porzingis is a big dude, 7'4", seven, 7'3", seven, 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 or something like that. Now, this is a guy who really doesn't play in the paint. He likes to play in the perimeter. But what do you think about that move? And what does it mean for Robert Williams III? That was Nothing. my first thought. You know, I, I thought that too, but then I said, okay, they're just going to shift Robert Williams III to the four. He's going to still be on the – you're going to still need mm-hmm. that strong presence in the paint. I don't care what nobody say. Robert Williams III is that dude. So he was a little injured. He was suffering through injuries in the 2023 season. I expect him to be a lot more healthy in 2024, and I still expect him to demand uh, floor time. Now, I don't know what this looks like under Coach Missoula. I can't say that. The Porzingis thing, I guess it's okay. My problem, my problem is that they had to 
do it. Um, and Marcus Smart was collateral damage. That's my problem. When Marcus, when I, the Porzingis piece, I was like, well, you know what? Whatever. Marcus Smart had to go. I felt like I broke up with him. I was like, what? <laughs> what just happened? Yeah. Of all people, Marcus Smart. Um, but Porzingis, I guess what they're looking for, um, t- again, I'm going to go back to, were they looking for, can we get a similar Nikola Jokic? Can we do that? Is that what the, is that what that move was about? Uh, oh man, when I heard it, I was like, no, uh, I hate to see Smart go. Me too. But I'm wow. happy to see him on the Grizzlies, though. I can't what do you think about happen that? that? Yeah, I think he will be fantastic on the Memphis Grizzlies veteran presence. If they're going to lose Dylan Brooks, Marcus Smart, I'll take him. You know, Marcus Smart is going to bring that leadership that they need in the locker room. I remember there was a previous video that we did where we talked about the Memphis Grizzlies, and I said what the Memphis Grizzlies is going to do in 2024 is they're going to have a cultural shift, cultural shift. And I think Marcus Smart is going to be a big part of that. Mm. And not only that, Marcus Smart is going to come in with the respect. I mean, come on. If you're talking about somebody, he, was he like one of the original dogs? I mean, like he yeah. got it defense-wise. So yeah. losing Dylan Brooks and bringing in a more veteran, more experienced, uh, more likable player in Marcus Smart, they are going to be great. So I am, uh, although I am upset, yes, two things can be uh, true. Two things. I can be upset about um, Marcus Smart leaving. Or being, you know, asked to leave <laughs> the <laughs> Boston Celtics, and I can be equally as happy as him being in uh, Memphis Grizzlies jersey. So, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, I love to see what that looks like, but I do believe that we'll see a lot more maturity in the way the uh, Memphis Grizzlies um, players handle themselves on and off the court. And also, the Memphis Grizzlies now have two Defensive Players of the Year. And Marcus Smart and Jaron Jackson Jr. Ooh, oh my gosh. I can't wait to see oh them now. God. When they brought in Smart, they had to get rid of Tyus Jones. I was not happy about that. Yeah, but you know, you know, at least he's going to the Wizards and he'll be able to play more. Oh, that is a point because he probably will start, you know, for the go um for the Washington Wizards. Okay. okay. So what do you think about the Washington Wizards overhaul during this trade season? I think it's great. You know, they got a lot of old money off of their books, i.e. Bradley Bill, um, Chris Apper singers. Get, mm-hmm. get that off the books. Bring in the young, young um, players. You know, we looking at Tyus Jones, Jordan Poole. You know, they already had Corey Denny and then uh, Daniel Gifford. I think they're doing a pretty good um, rebuild. They drafted Bilal, you know, around one, number seven in the 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, three NBA drafts. So, yeah, I'm happy to see what the Wizards are doing. They might be worth watching next season. Maybe. Maybe. They also, you know, they also acquired Danilo Gallinari. Now, you know, he never played one minute for the Boston Celtics, unfortunately. (laughs) So, at least he'll be back in, and that's a sniper. You know, he can give you a little something. So, I just... You know, my thing with the Wizards, what they gonna do with Kyle Kuzma? First of all, before I even make a, a statement about what they can do this 2024 season, where will Kyle Kuzma be? I think Kuz is gone. If they uh, can't pay him, he's uh, out of there. But with Kuzma, Jordan Poole, and Tyus Jones, I think they can make some noise in the Eastern Conference. Right that's what I'm t- they can at least be number 11. At least. <laughs> you and this number 11. <laughs> I mean, that's playing with the playing tournament, right? Oh. But again, for me, Kyle Kuzma, I need to know where he's going to be. If he's on the Wizards, then I then I can get on board with them making a little bit of noise. If he's not on the Wizards, then I, I don't know about that. Okay. So. What do you think about Bruce Brown declining his his uh, option? I think it was $6 million for the Denver Nuggets. I think it's appropriate. Pay mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. He declined it because he wants more money. I still believe he will be with the Denver Nuggets, but they're going to have to do more than $6 million. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. No, he was an active contributor to their championship. Right? Mm-hmm. He wasn't just somebody on the bench. He was active. Matter of fact, so active that some of the plays he did helped them get over the hump. You know, Bruce Brown had he was he was supposed to decline that. But that doesn't mean he's leaving, though. I hope because, he doesn't because leave. what Coach uh, Malone said he's gonna stay. He did. He said you, Bruce, you listen to him doing the parade. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. Not only did Bruce Brown decline his option, but Chris Middleton declined forty million dollars. Chris Middleton, I think you fumbled the bag. So I, you just you just yeah. had surgery on that knee. Who 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 gonna, who gonna do it? I know, I know. I was like Chris Middleton. You 
Okay, mm-hmm. it's good to gamble on yourself, but I think this is a crap out. Uh-huh. You... Oh, I think you kind of messed up on that one. He should have yeah. accepted that forty million. Yeah, yeah. Don't shoot at yourself. Don't. <laughs> Sure to yourself. I'm telling you. I don't know. Okay, now Draymond Green's another guy who uh, declined $27 million at this stage of his career. What do you think about that? I don't care. Okay. <laughs> I, you know how I feel. Draymond and Jen. I just, to me, it baffles me that he believes he's going to get more than that. Or maybe he's looking for the longevity of the contract. You're not going to get more than $27 million, Draymond Green. He made with the Warriors. He made with the Warriors. I just don't know what the Warriors are doing this season. So, I don't know. They they, they worry me. Don't you mess around and waste Steph Curry's um, legacy. Don't you mess his legacy up. Don't do that. I mean, I guess you can't mess up Steph Curry's legacy, but don't. Don't don't make his last years with the Warriors be junk. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. don't do that, Steph. No, he he's earned more than that. I just mm-mm. I don't I don't like I don't like what it does for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, okay. Look, look. What do you think about Clippers in trade talk for Paul George to the Knicks? <laughs> First of all, can Paul George play a full season? <laughs> Paul George at this stage, when he's on, he's phenomenal. Yeah. But he sits most of the season. The New York Knicks fans will eat him up. He better stay in Los Angeles. You know, I just don't see them breaking up Kawhi and Paul George in in, mm. in L.A. Is that really? So Paul George really has a market out there? Wow. You know, I read somewhere that he has not played more than 56 games in his four seasons with the Clippers. What, what is that? What, what is another team going to do with that? Mm-mm. When you have to go up against some of these top players where their players are durable. Like, and we're talking about in the West, right? So you mean to tell me the Clippers are going to give up Paul George and they're going to fight their way through the Western Conference with with what? When you got to go through, first of all, the Nuggets, you're going to have to contend with the Sacramento Kings. I can't say too much for the Warriors. The, the Suns, you want to kind of do something with the Suns, at least, you know, during the regular season. Like, what? And you're going to – uh-uh. I don't see it. I don't see it. So I thought that was kind of funny. It is funny. I, ooh, I just, if they do that, if Paul George is traded, Kawhi Leonard is probably going to retire. Because that puts too much on Kawhi Leonard. And he's not here for it. No, no. And then who they, then they don't have any money. The Clips don't have money. Who else are they going to acquire? Because they need to find the money to keep a uh, free agent Russell Westbrook, as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. If you're going to do with anything with any money, do that. They can oh, only offer him 3.8. Russ, that's almost like veteran minimum. Like, no. Mm-hmm. I, I think yeah, but where else can he go, though? <laughs> 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 I don't know. Some teams need a point guard. We just talked about it. Yeah, maybe with Eme. He's not going back to Houston. Russ already. Oh, I don't blame him. him. I don't blame him. Yeah, yeah. been there, done that. Yeah, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Mm-hmm. Ooh.